There is some optimistic news from Reeds Beach, the Villas, and other Delaware Bay towns where thousands of shorebirds stop to feed on their way to the Arctic each spring. Biologists say a count of the number of migrating red knots has increased to over 22,000 birds compared to 13,000 last year. From early May to early June, volunteers with the Delaware Riverkeeper Network and other organizations help capture and ban migrating shorebirds. A cannon-fired net is placed on the beach. Biologists then wait for the birds to fly into range. The volunteers rush to take the shorebirds out of the netting and into crates before banding them. The red knot population plummeted in the 1990s. They are now on New Jersey's threatened and endangered species list. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is considering whether to give the birds the same federal protection. Yeah, we really need the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to act and to act fast on the listing of the red knot rufa as an endangered species. Um, they are in significant decline. You know, we used to have somewhere around 180,000 on our Delaware Bay Shore beaches. Now we're hovering between 12,000 and 14,000. That is such, you know, that's 10% of the population. And one catastrophic event in this Delaware Bay region at exactly the wrong time of year, and we could be wiping out that species. Volunteers place ID bands on the birds to help track their migration. Small geolocators are also being attached to about 300 birds. What it's basically showing is that the red knot has a very variable migration pattern, and some of the knots have actually remained in Maryland over the winter, and some has gone, have gone as far as South America, as the southern tip of South America. So basically, there's a very variable migratory pattern, which is not what we expected. It also is telling us something about incubation behavior, which we didn't know. There were no records of full incubation periods for red knots before this work, and we've been able to use the geolocators to determine whether the birds are incubating in the Arctic, how long they're incubating, and whether or not it looks like they were successful. So the geolocators are telling us information that we didn't think we would be able to get any other way. Biologists are also concerned about three other species of migrating shorebirds. Ruddy turnstones, sanderlings, and semi-palmiated sandpipers are also captured, banded, and weighed. Researchers say the weight of the banned birds was the highest they have seen in 14 years. Larry Niles, the chief biologist, says a good horseshoe crab spawn helped. The red knot's decline is linked to over-harvesting of horseshoe crabs, especially the females. The birds feed on the crab eggs. This year's survey of the red knot population for the entire East Coast shows steady numbers. Although this year's migration count here is encouraging, Niles says there is still some troubling news regarding horseshoe crabs. A survey shows the female horseshoe crab population is not increasing despite a ban on harvesting these ancient creatures. The, the modeling is suggesting, you know, two human generations and the birds can't wait that long. So we got to do something else besides uh, just waiting for things to get better. The Delaware Riverkeeper Network says an ongoing U.S. Army Corps of Engineers deepening project in the Delaware River and Bay is a threat to the crabs. Uh, according to research by scientists from the state of Delaware, uh, the spoil disposal plan of the Army Corps of Engineers would really become an attractive nuisance for the horseshoe crabs. They would create what appears like um, beaches that could be successful for spawning by the crabs, but actually when the crabs came up on the beaches and laid their eggs, the dynamics of the sand are such that those, spawn, those eggs would not be viable. They would not actually hatch. So the crabs would be coming, would be laying their eggs, and the eggs would not be viable and would not be contributing to the horseshoe crab population. Niles believes other steps may have to be taken. The big question is that why are females not increasing when they're not being harvested? It either means that there's a significant illegal harvest or there's a use, like, you know, cra uh, crabbers are taking them at sea and using them at sea, uh, or that the people who are bleeding crabs for lysate are killing a lot more females than they own up to. But something is controlling the population, and we need to figure that out.